What it is, what it do, Cyber World. It is your girl, the one, the only, Ash Said It. Ash Said It dot com, Ash Said It dot com. Welcome to the Ash Said It daily podcast show. I appreciate you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,700 episodes and half a million streams worldwide. None of this would be possible without you guys, so I thank you so, so very much. And yes, we are well into the beautiful summer months. Kids are out for school, and some of you are stuck in those jobs that you're not too happy about. So I brought along with me today author Jay Allen. Hello, Mr. Jay Allen. (laughs) Hi, how are you, Ash? I am great. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thanks. It's a beautiful summer day. It is. So, Mr. Allen, where are you located? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm, so the so the weather's starting. It's, it's it's getting up there to those summer heat, isn't it? Well, unusually high for us, but maybe not so much for you in Atlanta. Yeah, that, mm, yeah, we we deal with that that humidity stuff, and Georgia's so bipolar. Sometimes it's just like up and down constantly. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely heating up down here for us. <laughs> All right. So, Mister Allen, when did you start writing books? Well, it didn't start with a book. It Mm. started because of my work with, uh, after I left corporate life 30 years ago, Mm. I founded a consulting firm, Masters Alliance, and we do work in 20 industries in 13 countries and work with execs uh, to make a difference with their customers and their markets. And so I started writing about my experiences along the way, and the, the writings were really mostly toward clients. And then I have one of my writings was in published in the international edition of CEO Today, and then another one followed up uh, about a year later in the international edition of uh, Finance Monthly. And mm. out of that result, I decided, well, I ought to put these experiences in a book because more people than my clients need to understand mm. that work can actually be exciting and motivating and engaging and there can be fun while working and fun at work and that's I think a lost art yes. or a lost understanding mm-hmm. I don't know which <laughs> it may be a little bit of both I would definitely say I think <laughs> I would as a matter think. of fact would you mind if I added to that sure I I think I was I was uh, sponsoring a good leadership meeting uh just before the book came out to reinforce what I was just saying. Mm -hmm. It's about 250 leaders in a breakfast, and I asked them how many people in the last 12 months have had fun at work. (laughs) And a few went hands went up, and then there were some guffaws and some snickers Mm -hmm. and a few, are you kidding me? What are you smoking? (laughs) And that was just further evidence that I was on the track of something. Right, right. So give us a tip about stepping outside of your comfort zone. I know this book goes into a lot of different aspects of of life and career and self-development. What's a tip that someone could use to help to step out of their comfort zone? Well, I think there needs to be a, a reason to really do that. And the reason that I focused, one of the main reasons that I focused on, other than the idea of the excitement of self-development, is understanding in any organization or any part of life who your customers really are mm-hmm. and what they're about and how you could make a difference in their lives. So you could be part of a church organization or social services or a big corporation or your own company. Mm-hmm. I have people saying they use this book in their family situation because they Mm. think, well, who are we trying to help? And that's really, really what I'm after and what, what I've found over the decades makes a difference in people's lives by making a difference in others' lives. And it's a rather simple formula, but I found it to be so exciting and so invigorating. Yes, yes. And creating something, I call it creating something cooking in what you're doing. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
like that. Well, there's a lot of mundane and a lot of dullness, and mm. and we've not found any part of an organization that can't connect with customers. When I was doing business with Microsoft Europe, the CEO, Christian Bedell, challenged me to see if accounts payable could connect with customers. Well, mm. they've never done that before, but right. we figured out a way to get them to understand customers, mm. and they got excited about their work. <laughs> I think that's so, a beautiful thing. This is not Pollyanna. No. It really works. Yes, yes. Now, how long did it take for you from, from start to finish, if you could guesstimate, how long did it take to start and complete this book? Well, actually, I talked about that just a few days ago. <laughs> I was kind of surprised. It was a three-year process. Oh, wow. And I've had a couple of, uh, potential authors, it's my first book, but I've had a couple of potential author, authors ask me, well, how did you do that? And I said, well, I have a really good friend who's on his seventh book. He's had a bestseller. He's had a New York Times bestseller. He writes differently than I do. He mm-hmm. actually devotes a certain number of hours a day and kind of cranks it out. Well, my policy was, or my approach, I guess, was to to make notes and things that I saw that were significant in other people's lives. Like one of the chapters is the burden of regret is greater than the risk of leading. Mm -hmm. So as I was, as I was interacting with clients and interacting with life in general, Mm -hmm. I would make notes sometimes electronic and sometimes on the back of an envelope and I'd stick it in folders and around topics. And I did that long enough that those two articles I mentioned came out and then other things came out. And then I coalesced that into what I thought were meaningful chapters. Mm. Uh, For instance, the chapter of right versus perfect. Right. You know, perfect is great, but if you don't ever get any, if you don't get things done in a timely manner, that doesn't make much difference. Right. And one of my clients was Allied Signal Aerospace and Even with them, I said, with all the tight quality controls you have to have in aerospace, it's not rocket science. I'm sorry. (laughs) And so, so it's about three years after the, the, all those, you know, I had, I had folders, electronic and, and paper folders of my bodies of writing and put those into chapters and then the publisher got an editor or a couple of editors, and we went through and hammered it out with each other. And the, the what I learned in that is the best thing an editor can ask is, is this the meaning you want to get out of this book, Jay, because we have some suggestions, and if this is if these suggestions do not line up with what you're trying to accomplish, mm-hmm. then we go with your version. <laughs> so. I like that. I love it. Now, last but certainly not least... What advice would you offer to any aspiring authors today? I think they have to have a goal and a purpose, and and they need to have something more than that. They need to have an expectation, whether it be mm. fiction or whether it be nonfiction like mine is. Right. They need to have an expectation that they hope that the readers will actually learn something or think about something differently, have some enjoyment. Mine's a uh, non-fiction, but it is enjoyable. I I get that feedback from people. I didn't really, it surprised me actually. (laughs) But the, the, the budding authors need to see the opportunities in the future readers of what they're working on that would cause them to get a benefit differently than what they're achieving right now in their lives. Mm, So even if you think of a a mystery novel, Mm -hmm. those things actually have some lessons in them. Yeah, they do. And they're fun, Mm -hmm. but they actually have some takeaways that people Mm -hmm. can say, I learned something from that process. I'm going to think differently about A, B, C. Right. So if, an, if, you ha- if the author has that purpose in mind, it accomplishes, in my way of thinking, 
several things. One is the readers will be attracted to it. Right. Number two, the writing it will be more enjoyable. Enjoyable. And mm -hmm. another thing that happens is that uh, there's an influence factor to that, mm. which helps a continuation of the of the process. Right. And you can see by by thinking about those when when you when there are some tough bumps, you think, well, wait a minute. I, as an author, need to reflect why I'm putting all this effort into it. Oh, I remember why I'm putting all this effort into it. Right. Oh, I'm going to get after this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Mr. J. Allen, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you dropping those little gemstones on us. <laughs> Certainly love well, that. thank you. Let everyone know where they can go to get the book. Well, it's available on Amazon. It's available on Amazon in three forms. Uh, one is the paper. Mm -hmm. The other is electronic. And just this week, it became active on Amazon Audio. It became Ooh. active on Audible. And it became active on iTunes. Congratulations. And That's huge. Thank you. So the reason it took a little longer is my publisher and many others, including the author that I just mentioned that was the bestseller, said, Jay, you have to record this yourself. Mm. So that took a little time in a professional studio during COVID. Mm. And boy, did I learn a lot. Yeah. But, I, <laughs> but you got it done. <laughs> so I got it done, and I, I, I think it's good listening. I've had some people listen to it, and they say, hey, that works. So yeah. who knows? Awesome. Whoever guessed. <laughs> <laughs> and the book again, you guys, that is Bucketheads, Transform Something. Opportunity is everywhere. Jay Allen, thank you so much. Definitely keep those good vibrations flowing. <laughs> And um, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for your love and support. Keeping in mind anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do. You look them square in the face. You tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for, the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys. <laughs>